when, again, I'm quoting you, when Rousseau said that man is born free but everywhere in chains, he expressed the essence of the unconstrained vision which the, in which the fundamental problem is not nature or man, but institutions. Yes. Would you explain that one? Well, he has the notion that, uh, again, that, that good things happen naturally. Uh, and if they're bad things, it's because uh, institutions, including civilization itself, have, have made these bad things happen. And of course, uh, and I think that that's really the, uh, the, uh, the implicit assumption behind a lot of things that are said on the left today. Uh, and what, why in my most recent book, I go to a lot of trouble to show that uh, in nature, uh, there is nothing resembling equal opportunity. That wherever you look around the country, around the, around the world, uh, you find people who live up in the mountains, poor and backwards, even in the richest country, uh, including the United States. Mm -hmm. I believe the, the poorest country in the United States, the county rather, uh, was in a mountain community, uh, which was almost 100% white. Somewhere and, in Appalachia, West Virginia, yes, yes, yeah, Southern yeah, Ohio. Or, right, yes. mm -hmm. uh, and, and that men in that, in that county had a life expectancy 10 years less than men in a, in a county in, in, in Virginia. And the constrained, the unconstrained vision says, let's fix that. We, surely we can pass a law that would improve that. And the constrained vision says, well, now wait a moment. If people who live in isolated pockets in mountains are poor and backwards all around the world, and we see this pattern over and over and over again, maybe there's something very deeply rooted in reality about that yes. that's hard for us to get at. Correct? Yes. All right. So... In the book, A Conflict of Visions, you're very dispassionate and very analytical, and you lay out the unconstrained vision, and you lay out the constrained vision, and you don't really come out blazing in favor of one or the other. No, it, 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 yeah, the, the, that is not a book meant to, meant to uh, show one vision is, is better than the other. It, it's there to show you what, what they are and what right. you're assuming. If you, if you go one direction or another. Okay. And it's, it's to encourage people to understand the implicit assumptions behind all this, without which you're, you're just at, 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 lot, at loose ends. All right. So pondering all this, I, I noticed something, a, a column that you wrote, this is a couple of years ago, in which you rebutted Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times. And Kristof had ascribed the gaps between African Americans and whites in America, gaps in wealth, gaps in educational achievement, the usual gaps, mm -hmm. to, and this is a quotation from Christoph, to the lingering effects of slavery, close quote. Oh, yes. And here's Tom Sowell, quote, if we wanted to be serious about <laughs> evidence, we might compare where blacks stood 100 years after the end of slavery with where they stood after 30 years of the liberal welfare state. In other words, we could compare hard evidence on the legacy of slavery with hard evidence on the legacy of liberals, close quote. And so there it is, life is hard. You use the word hard. You, you use the word serious. You use evidence. Tom Sowell is a man of the constrained vision through and through and through, correct? Yes. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, yes, you know, I, I, part of a, of a vanishing breed, I might I, so when So when you were a Marxist, the notion, explain that, because the Mar Marxism... Well, but no, no, you see, yeah, so that's complicated. I, even when I was a Marxist, I, I had the same intellectual standards. Right. And, and that, that's what eventually led me away from it. Oh, I see. In other words, I, did, I hadn't done all the research. I hadn't gone around the world. Looking, looking for evidence. Yes, yes. Okay.